Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a long time since I posted something. So I thought I would share with you something here. It's been a long time since I've uh, gotten any starships from the Star Trek Starships collection. Obviously with the pandemic and life and all other things have taken uh, a little bit more of a priority than ordering ships. Although I have been tempted on occasion. But I, <laughs> I knew this book was coming out and I did not want to pass it up. And thus, now that I have it and have finally decided to take a look at it, I thought I would share it with you. And so, here we are. The uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine Illustrated Handbook by Hero Collector and or Eagle Moss, depending on your preference there. And, as you can see, it is a nice thick book, hardcover of course, with a uh, cool looking dust jacket here, which features uh, basically the station there, and a little cutaway diagram, Cisco, and one of the uh, more popular promotional images of the uh, Starship Defiant. So let's dive right into it and uh, see what's inside. Okay, so opening up, you'll see it's just a black cover. It simply says Star Trek Deep Space Nine, which is nice. It has the original font from the show. And there's, of course, an advertisement in here for other books in the uh, collections, etc. So I'll put that aside. And uh, one of the uh, more popular images of the station there. Deep Space Nine. Your table of contents. So there's a lot here. For those of you who are curious, please uh, pause this video if you want to... Uh, know exactly what is featured in this book in particular. And then there's a foreword, of course, the acknowledgments, and a very, very cool CG rendering of the station, which I believe was included in the Star Trek Starships uh, bonus special magazine of Deep Space Nine. And then we get into that. A lot of these images were actually seen in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine technical manual that came out like a bazillion years ago. So that's kind of cool. We got a lot of information here to process and read. And then we get into the operational history. Nice image there. Screen caps from various episodes. And basically just gives a quick, but rather detailed overview of essentially the entire show, but mainly the key events that happened from the pilot episode all the way through the last episode of the series. So yeah, as you can see, it's quite extensive, even to Odo's return to the Great Link, etc., etc. And now we get into the annotated exterior views. We've got some text, some uh, diagram, diagram things here, port elevation, dorsal ventral views. Then we get into the, the Bajoran wormhole and all about that and diffusion power generation, some diagrams and such. The EPS network referenced and seen many times throughout the show. The RCS thrusters, which we actually only saw used once. Then we have our tactical systems, which we did see uh, several times throughout the series, especially toward the later half of the show or the latter half of the show. We have the counter Insurgents program, which was uh, we did see in the third season, which actually was a really cool episode, by the way. Um, I forgot what it was called. It wasn't called uh, Second Chances. Uh, no, that was something else. Uh, it'll come back to me later. But yeah, that was a cool episode. And uh, so this shows that. It shows the defensive shields, which were used often enough on the series. And... Uh, the auto-destruct system, which we did see referenced a few times as well. And let's see. Communications and sensors. We have our Starfleet uh, com badge and Bajoran ones and uh, other things there. And we have our subspace relays with like a diagram that shows you a very simple way of how it works. And we have our operations center or ops as it became to be known, or as it became to be known, excuse me. And the operations table. And 
then let's see, we have our Cardassian isolinear rods. <laughs> Man, one of the best episodes in the pale moonlight. And uh, Cardassian screens, which we saw several times, especially in the first season, this little desktop screen thing that we did see. And uh, we have the command office, which was Cisco's office, which we saw almost every episode. We have the transporter systems seen several times. Turbo lift network, some nice shots of Kira and Zial there. We have the promenade seen almost every episode. Quarks also almost in every episode. The double table, double girls, Quarks hollow suites. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. So let me just try to speed through this so you can just quickly see without me giving a commentary. But we have Garrick and dining, security office. So yeah, in a nutshell, this book features all the good stuff that you can imagine. Um, even has the orbs, the infirmary, the infirmary bio beds, the neurocortical probe, dermal regenerators. It, mentions, it pretty much covers almost everything seen on the series. And uh, there's that Bajoran tablet uh, that Cisco shattered in the, uh, I believe the fifth season, which coincidentally, the pieces of or a second or replica will be featured in season two of Star Trek Picard. We'll see how that goes. Um, oops. And then we have the ward room, residential quarters, photos quarters, replicator systems, Zex call center, which didn't know that was specifically for him, but okay. Uh, cargo bays. Security gates and airlocks, docking, which we saw all the time, although we never did see the Defiant dock down there at one of the lower pylons, and uh, the runabouts. Uh, most of this information, I think, was taken from the magazine that was featured as part of issue number 32, which was the runabout itself. I don't know what was released inside of the XL edition. I haven't gotten that yet, but a very beautiful, gorgeous image here. Unfortunately, this page kind of takes away some of that. And then we have more of that. These are images also seen in the original magazine. And various views, ventral, starboard, elevation, front and aft. Notice, notice it features the uh, sensor or weapons pod, depending on your preference. And the registry for the runabout featured in this book is actually the Orinoco, which coincidentally is also the model that we got in the collection. And then this also breaks down something which I think is pretty cool. It breaks down every runabout seen on the show and heard or referenced in the show uh, by name, all along with a brief like synopsis of what happened to that runabout. So it kind of goes through the line with the Rio Grande obviously being the longest surviving runabout throughout the entire show. It was in the pilot, and it lasted all the way through season seven in the last episode. And a little bit more on that. Now, uh, fans will notice, at least those of us who have been around for a while, will remember some of these diagrams because like the USS Enterprise book and the Voyager book before this, uh, a lot of diagrams were lifted from the old Star Trek fact files that was released in England and the UK, et cetera. Um, and then those of us here in the United States will remember these diagrams from Star Trek, the magazine that came out in the late nineties and ended around 2003. That was a pretty cool magazine and uh, I loved them and I have most of them, but it's awesome to see these diagrams recreated here. And actually I did not know this for several years that actually the individual, of course, Ben Robinson, who was in, who's in charge of most of the stuff for Eagle Moss was actually the one doing the magazine back then. So it kind of ties it almost full circle, at least for me. And then we have the habitat mod module. So more stuff on the runabout there, it's nice. Nice that it's included here. If I can get this page separated, I can move on. All right. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff, the distress beacon. And then the Defiant, 
beautiful image there, but unfortunately, like you can't really enjoy it. It should have been like a pullout if I had to, uh, to choose myself. Um, a lot of this information, or most of it, was in the Defiant Magazine special and the XL edition. So if you don't want the book, you can always go that route. A lot of images here, promotional, screen caps from episodes, etc. Uh, and then, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, annotated exterior views, gorgeous ship imagery. You got your dorsal view, your eventual starboard elevation front, aft, some gorgeous views there, and it gives you a breakdown of all the systems with some of these things actually being in the, from the Star Trek technical manual, Deep Space Nine technical manual. And uh, I know this was in there, and uh, this L Cars was also in there. So it's cool to see these things in here. And then we got the weapons and defensive systems of the Defiant, so it's nice to see that there. Uh, it's always cool. We have the bridge which was in the magazine from back in the day. And the holographic systems as well, which we only saw once but never used again. Uh, the transport systems, which we, which we saw often enough after season three when the show was, uh, when they actually got the Defiant. We got the engineering, which we saw many times. And uh, crew quarters, etc., Mess hall, etc. The sick bay. And the shuttle. Uh, we actually only saw the shuttles once or twice. Um, I don't remember actually, yeah, we actually did see the shuttle. We saw them twice. We saw this one, and then we saw this one um, from that episode where, uh, from the search when uh, Kira and Odo went down to the Changeling planet to the Omerian Nebula to find his people. And then the shuttlecraft Chaffee, which was included in the Star Trek Starships collection, which I also have. Uh, I believe it was shuttle pack number three, if I'm not mistaken, either two or three. And this was in the fifth or sixth set of the shuttle collection, which I don't have yet, but I am fully intending on getting that. Actually like this design a lot better. Fits the aesthetic of the Defiant better, I think. And then we have even the USS Sao Paulo, which was uh, renamed USS Defiant in the last few episodes of Deep Space Nine, once the original Defiant was destroyed. And then we have hand phasers. So yeah, this book is pretty comprehensive. The uh, Starfleet TR-116 rifle, Bajoran energy weapons, which were cool. Always did like those weapons. Bajoran tricorders, uh, anti-changeling device. Which was interesting because this was only seen once, to my knowledge, if I can remember. Uh, I think it was Dias Cast. Um, so yeah, it was cool to see that. And then um, there were other devices seen in Homefront and Paradise Lost, but not like this. And then we have the polar monometers seen from um, Apocalypse Now or Apocalypse Rising, if I'm not mistaken. The Quantum Stasis Box. And Self-Replicating Minds, which we saw in uh, season, uh, I think it was five, at the end of season five and early part of six. The remote transporter scene in uh, several episodes, mostly the ones that had to do with the Mirror Universe, which I thought was cool. And then we get to the uniform, rank, insignia, and command structure. So that's neat to have that here. Of course, the various uniforms seen throughout the uh, show. Also diagrams from the Star Trek Back Files and Star Trek The Magazine. And then these gorgeous uniforms here and desert uniforms, which we, uh, let's see, when did we see these? Yeah, these were more like in season seven. And then uh, combat uniforms, which we saw a few times. You saw it, I think, at first in season five, four or five, and then it made an appearance again in uh, season seven in the latter half of the Dominion War. And uh, pretty much that's it. The book ends pretty much with this combat uniforms thing. There's no 
like afterthought or anything like that, which would have been cool, but at least we get an index. So if you're looking for something specific, uh, you can probably find it here. And uh, of course in the back, it wouldn't be complete without uh, showing you what other books are available. So please also check those out. I'm happy to say that I have these here, uh, which is the uh, original Enterprise and Enterprise A. And then of course, the Next Generation, which is the Enterprise D. And of course, the Star Trek Voyager book. And now currently we're looking at the Deep Space Nine book. And then for those of you who also like the collection, the ships, uh, these books are also available. Most of this stuff, all of this stuff for the most part were taken directly from the magazines that accompanied all the various Starship models and station models that we've gotten since this collection launched in 2013. Um, I personally only got, I think, uh, which one was it? This one? Because I just don't care about the Discovery stuff. So I only wanted the uh, late 23rd and 24th century stuff. I was not interested particularly um, in the Discovery stuff. Although I would love to get the TOS stuff as well. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this book. We got some interesting stuff back here. Some bonus stuff which is nice and then that's the credits and then your back page which is and uh back of the book and that's pretty much wraps this book up it's a very nice addition to the illustrated handbook collection and we get another image of the station there with uh some stuff there so yeah guys definitely check this book out you can find it on eagle moss or uh hero, hero collectors online shop and uh, if that doesn't float your boat, you can always check out Amazon, which is where I think I got this. And uh, it makes a wonderful addition to any Trekkies fan collection. Um, it's nice to see these kinds of things coming out. Uh, it definitely makes it easier if you just want to grab one book that has pretty much very, you know comprehensive information and anything in there without having to search high and low for uh, certain resources. You know, it's better to carry this book around as opposed to say carrying the two volume Star Trek encyclopedia that came out a few years ago. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are staying safe. Uh, I hope you guys are all being safe out there, getting vaccinated, uh, taking care of yourselves and each other. And uh, until next time, guys, Never mind the noise outside there. Uh, until next time, guys, live long and prosper. Take care of yourselves and uh, I'll be back again soon with more cool stuff to show you. Take care.